Yeah, I love it. <gasps> a suit. Would you think of putting the suit back on again for Tony Stark? I've become surprisingly uh, open-minded to the idea. Probably the most like-me character, strangely, I've ever played, even though he's yeah. way cooler than I am. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Robert Downey Jr. was just talking about returning as Iron Man in the Marvel movies, and it's no coincidence this is happening right now after he spent all the last couple of years saying he did not want to come back. He didn't care. He wanted to do other types of non-Marvel movies, movies that were not based on traditional comic books. So what changed his mind so suddenly? Why is he talking about coming back now of all times? Well, there's a couple important reasons, and most of you have probably figured this out because it's not too dissimilar with what happened with Hugh Jackman saying that he had been retired as Wolverine after the Logan movie, but then turning right around and coming back for Deadpool and Wolverine. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, we're doing that Deadpool and Wolverine ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what kind of character you want Robert Downey Jr. to play when he actually does come back if he's not going to be playing his original version of Iron Man. But rewind to Avengers Endgame several years ago. That's how long it's been. It's been several years. Just this past year, new information was revealed about what was actually going down behind the scenes at Marvel when they were making Endgame. Apparently, Robert Downey Jr. went into that movie not wanting Marvel to kill off his character. Originally, one of their first ideas was to have Captain America be the one to snap the Infinity Gauntlet and sacrifice himself. According to the Russos and the writers and Kevin Feige, their reasoning for changing it to Iron Man, according to their own statement, is that they thought the twist for Captain America was too obvious, too easy, because he was always the character that was ready to throw himself on the bomb to protect everyone else. Too many people would go into the movie expecting him to do this. And it'd be a bigger twist in the theater, like a bigger surprise, oh crap moment to see Iron Man, most selfish person on the Avengers, be the one to throw himself on that bomb and snap his nano Infinity Gauntlet. Eventually, the Russos and Kevin Feige talked Robert Downey Jr. into the idea. So originally, you have to imagine that Iron Man was going to survive Endgame, and they would have just gone on and made Iron Man 4 with him like they would have any other sequel, like they made Thor 4 Love and Thunder because Thor survived. They would have done the same thing for Iron Man. But eventually, the Russos and Kevin Feige talked Robert Downey Jr. into the idea of being the one to snap the Infinity Gauntlet. They kill him, and after the movie came out, he casually started talking about the end of his run at Marvel, the fact that the checks eventually stopped coming in, like, well, the checks are done, like, I guess, I guess I'm done too. He made a reported $75 million for Infinity War and another $75 million for Endgame. His famous back-end deal entitled him to a significant portion of the profits to any of the movies that they put him in. In both movies together, just those two movies earn many billions of dollars. So it is totally normal to hear any actor of any kind be reluctant to give up that kind of status he had inside Marvel because they treated him like a king. Like it wasn't just about the money. He was treated like a king on sets. Credit to Kevin Feige. He was always relatively happy with their financial arrangement. Like he didn't have any problem signing those checks for Robert Downey Jr. He loves him in real life too. Like they're actually good friends. But here's the thing, heading into Marvel